Hello and welcome to Springboard, your virtual university. My name is Albert Okran, welcoming you on behalf of Team Springboard. This is your most inspirational show and that place where the greatest minds in the world converge. Springboard is brought to you by the Springboard Roadshow Foundation and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse and the Enterprise Group with media support from the Multimedia Group and the Graphic Communications Group. So, today I'm in a mood for a relaxed conversation about finding yourself. I'm of the belief that many people live and die without finding out who they truly are. And I read recently a story about a woman in those days where photography was done on films who, after her death, the family uncovered some photos she had taken the films of them and found out that she was a world-class photographer who had lived her life doing something else. So posthumously, they proclaimed her a world-class photographer. She lived and died without finding herself. To help us explore this subject, I have a good friend and brother of mine, Reverend Mauli Chikata, lead pastor at Grace Center, radio host of This Is Your Day on CTFM, and also an IT consultant. Also, good to see you. Good to see you too. It's always a blessing. It's, it's a blessing to be before you. <laughs> yes, yes, yes. How, how important is this conversation as a professional, as a, a broadcaster and a radio pastor at that, and also as a minister of the gospel, how important is a conversation about just finding yourself? I think that it's important. And for me, um, coming from the perspective of being a man of God and a preacher of the gospel, it hits right at the center of who we are because you cannot find yourself unless you have found your creator. Because in the scriptures, in John 15 verse 5, Jesus says that without me, you can do nothing. And he says, seek and you will find. So for you to be able to find yourself, you would have to have that foundation of God, of knowing who God is, of knowing who Christ is. And from knowing who Christ is, yourself will be revealed to you. Then you can live the life that God wants you to live. That's what people call the purpose for your life. And so for me, finding yourself is key. But in finding yourself, it will lead you to the greater God, the creator of, of all of us. And according to the gospel, you find yourself through Jesus Christ. And so that is where I come from. And that's the perspective I hold to in finding yourself. One would assume that this would be fundamental to every human being. But I started from the, on, on the note of somebody who lived and died yeah. without finding herself. Would you call that an abstract situation or is it a reality in many people's lives? It's a reality in many people's lives because there are people who live based on what circumstance presents to them. There are people who do things based on what other people tell them without knowing truly who they are. There are others who also know who they are, but find it very difficult to, to live the life and, and to live the discovery of who God has made them. So it's a reality we face around us. And so this is very important because I believe that it will help people come to the place where they know who they are, they found the purpose for their lives, and they are living it to the glory of God. I, 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 I'm sure you wonder why, of all the things that we could have a conversation about, I chose this topic. But yes, because I was wondering, <laughs> you know me as, this is why, <laughs> but you, you came up with this, but I said, okay, it's, it's, it's Pastor Albert, let me just come. <laughs> yes. And so, 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 so for the reason why I, I, I felt we should have this conversation in a relaxed manner yeah. is because there are people who are very angry. Yeah. Some are angry at God, mm -hmm. angry at their friends, mm -hmm. angry at their educational system, angry mm -hmm. at their parents, mm -hmm. angry at everyone, including themselves, mm -hmm. because far later in life, they found what they believed to be the true self. self. And the, the sense of having wasted so much time is very difficult to forgive. And so let's start from 
your own life mm-hmm. when you were growing up i've mentioned the three legs that i know about it i'm mm-hmm. sure they are this but <laughs> let's start with a pastor a broadcaster and an IT consultant. Mm. So let's see that when you were growing up, did any of these three feature in your plans and ideas? No, not at all. I mean, I'm sure you had that experience growing up. Yeah, yeah. There are some key um, career options yeah. that are available. You know, in, 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 <laughs> when you go to your, the, the, when you go to your safari, you have the big five. <laughs> <laughs> so. The, these legs were available. I mean, you want to be a doctor, tomorrow you want to be an engineer, another time you want to be an accountant, you want to be a pilot. Or a lawyer in this. Yes. Yeah. I mean, <laughs> you want to be a lawyer. And people have all kinds of things they tell you. And for me, where I am today, I never saw it coming. I mean, when I was leaving the university, um, friends who were closer to me knew that I was going to China. Why? Because I'd seen what China was doing. I actually started learning the language. Um, so I, I wanted to work with the world superpower. So I'm going there. I'll, 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 I'll raise funds, go there, do business, and then come back home and then do what I have to do. Because I saw, I, yes, I saw where China was going. What did you see? Business. What, what did you do in university? Agric. I did oh, plant. Oh, Agric. <laughs> like I did plant biotechnology. Serious? Yes. So. That was, that was what was going on in my mind. Even though I was, as a Christian, I was with the UCF, we're doing camps, we're, we're doing missionary work. I mean, in my church, I was in, I was sent to Nigeria, Kano, to train and to do missionary work there. When Benin, when Togo, I was doing the work of God. I was all over the place. Anybody who knew me from secondary school to university would tell you that this is, SU, Crefe, boy. But I never saw myself as becoming a pastor. So which which of was this? University of Ghana. Okay. Yes. And the secondary school? Ghana National College. Okay. Yes. So I was, I was in the church. I, mean, I was a typical church boy. Crusade, you find us fixing tents, carrying the chairs, projecting, praying, all that we did. But I never saw myself as a full-time or somebody standing behind the pulpit preaching the gospel, even though that was what I was doing on campus at the time. Um, but the shift came when after school, I did my national service. I was working, I was actually on a farm in Takrade. And then in all I was doing, I, I never felt fulfilled. So I came, I think it was God just, just telling me that this is not where you belong. For now, this is not where you belong. So I came back to Accra and I was trying to help a friend set up his business. Then I got a call from Kina Likimani. Mm. Um, At the time, social media was was just picking up um, in the country. So I got a call from Kina. She says, I've seen how you tweet and I want you to come for us to have a conversation. So I went to meet Kina we had this conversation. She had a project. Was um, the project was Ghana decides um, covering the elections on social media. So I, was, I said, okay, let's let's do it. She explained the 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 project, the goals, what they were expecting, and what is being expected from us. So I I joined the team, went through the training. Thanks to Kwabena uh, Kwame Boating, he. He worked with the U.S. Embassy, now he's with the IMF, took, took us through the process, the likes of Mark Jordan, Dega Joe, we're all part of the team and we worked together um, to cover Ghana's elections on social media. So we had a lot of support from um, this. We did one in 20, 2008 and we did another one in 2012. And we had a lot of support from BBC Africa, Al Jazeera, CNN, we're all over the place. Um, in Ghana, City partnered us at the time. Um, Radio XYZ also partnered us. So we did a lot of work. And so I got interested in this whole social media space. Then after the 2012 elections, um, Bernard reached out to Kina and said, we've seen the work you've done. Um, we think that we need somebody on your team to join us at City to help with our social media work. So Kina said, okay, if you're looking for somebody to work with, then I think Maoli will be the, the best person to speak to. So 
I engaged Bernard and then we agreed and then I joined CT. Joining CT, I joined CT with social media. That was what, because that was what I did with um, the Ghana Decides project. But meeting with Mr. Samuel Atamens Asamens, after working for like two months, he called me to his office and said, you know, I know you came here for social media, but that's not what's in you. I believe God wants something greater for you. So don't look at it as social media limiting yourself. Expand the scope. Look at the digital space. Look at website. Look at apps. Just explore the digital space. So there comes in a mentor, somebody who is watching you, seeing the work you're doing, and sees who has an eye for talent, and sees the potential you have, and, and directs your path. So sometimes we'll call you to his office, give, give you books, go and read. And then you also have to study websites here and there. And he always advise you to look for people who are, who are of your kind. So Maximus will come in, the likes of Maximus will come in, Stephen Na Na uh, Nasser Bwedi will come in. So at every point in time, you are engaging with people like that, Nehemiah Tiga, because it's new to you. So you come up with a project, you run it by them. They're like, okay, this is what you, this one works. Let's do it this way. Let's do it that way. So I was running with all these minds around me, making sure that what I had been given, I'm able to accomplish it. And you work with a boss who is not afraid to take risk. I mean, you, you run with him with ideas and he tells you, okay, just do it this way. Run with it this way. So my days at City was exciting because I had a boss who will always flow with you when you came up with ideas and give you the room to also explore what you have. So we did a lot of new things. There are a lot of things you see on the digital space when it comes to Ghana's media that came from here. I mean, when we came, people were not live tweeting programs. We started live tweeting programs. Um, people were not doing infographics. We we'll do infographics, tell stories, try to make stories easy for people to, to understand. Um, people were not doing news cards. So, that we did a lot of work in the digital space for city in terms of news coverage and other media houses will see and carry it along. Um, I remember there was a day we, we did a program and we said, okay, these are the people who partner us. Let's acknowledge them. So in our photos, we'll put the, the, the logos all of the credits. Yes. All the credits there. And then people see it and now it's all over the place. So that's where I came from. And then, I had this ministry, the, the ministry thing was there, but I didn't know. I, I, I didn't want to do it. But in prayer you, one you, day. You, strong, like, you didn't know, you didn't want to. <laughs> <laughs> I, I think that my experiences with some ministers of the gospel um, moved me away from that space. But in prayer one day, um, I could hear clearly that um, there is a higher call. There is a higher call. And that higher call is to preach the gospel. So that's where the ministry came in. And I had to, I mean, train myself, take myself to the seminary. Once again, you have mentors, so mentors like Samens once, once again, because his, his influence in my life is, is great. And one thing he told me was that if you're going to do this, you either drink deep or don't drink at all. That was what he told me when I was leaving his office that day. And that pushed me to go into seminary. And that's why I'm doing um, um, ministry. I left City in 20, 2019. And after six months, he calls me and says, do you know you can be on radio? Why aren't you on radio? I was like, ah, it's okay. I have this slot for you. If you're available, 4 to 6 a.m., I want you to be on the, on the team. And that's how my radio ministry also began. So for me, it's been a journey of God 
and people that God has used to be a blessing um, for what I do in my life. So God, no doubt, Sames, Bernard, Kina, friends like Maximus, I'll never forget about them, Maximus, Nehemiah, Stephen Nancy Bwedi, Kwabna Ekrema Bwati. These guys have been very instrumental in the journey of my life. You're yeah, a very good storyteller. Actually, as you were talking, I was writing the chapters of the book. I mean, my, my, I, I wonder whether it's my first love. I can listen to a story like this. Wow. After, after 10 minutes, I've written the chapters of the book. And if you, if you provoke me, I can produce a book. Amazing. No time. I wrote one book, one of our books. I wrote it from Johannesburg to Accra. By the time I wrote it, I was finished. Wow. I was done. The more you know, the better it gets. Wow. The title, the structure, everything. By the time South African always landed in Kutuka, the book mm. was done. Wow. And yours is a story that can easily become a book. I have all the chapters on this. Amazing. This if, you, if you choose me well. <laughs> <laughs> if you just joined us, this is Springboard, your virtual university, my guest, Reverend Mauli Chikata. You know his voice on CTFM, 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. This is your day. Yeah, this is your day. This is your day. Yes. Mr. Mauli, on This is Your Day, he also is an IT consultant, sharing with us some of the footprints, if I may use that word, of himself in the digital space, and he's also the lead pastor at Grace Center. And this is a conversation about finding yourself. And I'm happy that he tells the story in this way because you can see an almost convoluted journey from yeah. growing up to wanting to become one of the big five like everyone else, and they're going to a plant biotechnology. I'm like, wow, the name alone cry is scary. <laughs> then the bit about China. Yes. How does a man grow up wanting to go to China? It, it's just not, not easy at all. Then being a campus preacher man, fixing yeah. tents, yeah. fixing equipment, that unfulfilled part of life. And then tweeting that many people use for entertainment and leisure becoming the, the key thing that made him catch the attention of a connector. And then one connector led to other connectors. And yeah. then an election coverage in two two segments, and then somehow Bernard, and then the Samens connection, and then the ministry, the yeah. not knowing versus the not wanting. Yes. And then the calling in prayer and the seminary. This is the story unfolding of Pastor Mauli Chikata here on Springboard, your virtual university. But the real question: have you found yourself? And do you like what you found? Or you're running away like Jonah from <laughs> what you saw that you do not want to see. Let's explore a bit more. Also, yeah. So in this journey, you mentioned certain blocks that I would like to, to explore further. So for instance, you mentioned things that you were doing on campus that you didn't even think would become your career later on. Yeah. And so let's go to talent, things you are talented in that you enjoy doing and you don't even think maybe that would become your full-time profession. You are doing other things, but that thing that you were doing on campus could later come back to become your mainstay. Yeah. Let's explore that bit. Okay, so that's what, that's ministry you're talking about. Yes, in your yes. case, ministry. Yes. But I'd like us to explore from scripture or from real life, the fact that a talent that you may not even regard could end up being yes. the centerpiece of your life. So, um, tweeting, I, 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 I tell this in a funny way. Um, I used to fellowship at um, Fountain of Wisdom, Wisdom Chapel, um, Reverend Akentin Fredri Ajiman. So when he is preaching, I'll be at the back. And then what he says, when I find something very striking, I'll just put the quote on the screen. So that was what I was just using to tweet. Same. You see? So it was something in the house of God that I was doing. Like, I just love great quotes. So if you say something that's striking, I'll just write it down. Because one day I may refer to it to help me. And so that was what I was doing. So there are things that we do that are insignificant in our lives mm -hmm. that we may see as nothing, but at the end of the day will would, would lead us to the path that God has ordained for us. And so anything you're doing that comes to you naturally, um, don't, don't take it for granted. Just know that God can work with it. You know, when Moses saw, met the Lord at the burning bush 
And God said, go tell Pharaoh to let my people go that they will serve me in the wilderness. Moses said, if I go, what will let them believe that you are the God who sent me? God said, what's in your hands? God wanted to prove something to him. That the very thing that you have is what I'm going to use to show the people that I have sent you. I'm not going to bring something from outside. Yes. I'm going to use the very thing you have. Jesus, the disciples came to him, sorry, to tell him to send the people away because they were hungry. And there was no food. There was no food. They were trying to convince him. So they say, oh, we have this, this, this amount of money. It can't even feed us, let alone the rest of the people, just to discourage him. Then they go again and come back and they are like, it's just a little boy with five loaves and some fish. Jesus said, I'm going to use this very thing to change the story and to transform the lives of the people. What's the lesson in that for a person who doesn't believe in what God gave him or a country that doesn't believe in the people that he has or in a continent that doesn't even see itself as being able to rise up? I, I, I see that as, first of all, ingratitude and our inability to appreciate that if God has placed you here and has given you this, he knows what's best for you. Many a time we think that we know what is better or what is best. But if you are a believer like you and I, we need to understand that for everything that we have, for everything that we will become, God knows best and God gives to us what he knows is best for us. And so we need to first begin by appreciating what we have. If you don't appreciate what you have, you're going to lose it because what you don't value, you lose. And that is what's happening to a lot of people because we don't value what God has given to us. We look at what another person mm. has mm. and we want that. No, you must appreciate what God has given to you and walk by it. And that's one of the things I've learned even in my, in my few years of ministry. What I have is ability to make the word simple. Somebody can take a word, the, the same scripture, and make it sound mysterious. I don't have that grace. Mine is, take the word, break it down into one, two, three, four points. Explain it. That's all. That's me. Another person... You know where you got it from? <laughs> Listening to somebody else's own and summarizing it. Exactly. And tweeting it. Exactly. Let me ask about the same... Mm. What is it in staying back and serving somebody by taking what they have done and amplifying it to the world? Because guess what? Yeah. That is what made you all Steve ways. Yes. Watching the camera in yeah. the media room, yeah. supporting John Austin, Austin his yeah. father, yeah. to minister, yeah. and then projecting it to the world in a way that they can consume it. His ministry was born. Yeah. What is it in, in being able to serve other people and take what they have done and make it available to the world, possibly in a better way in terms of packaging yeah. than has been presented? Yeah. What is it in serving other people that brings out what you have yourself? You need to understand that for every season of your life, or for season, there are seasons in our lives, there are times where God brings us to the place where we must serve. In fact, not times. Jesus calls us to a place of eternal service. So if you read the Apostle Paul, he calls himself a born servant. Jesus said that I did not come to be served. I came to serve after washing the feet of his disciples. And he was telling them, if you, telling them that if you want to be great in the kingdom, this is what you have to do. You, you, you have to have that, that spirit of service in you. And to have that spirit of service in you, you must have the bigger picture. The bigger picture is that we want to influence lives. The bigger picture is that we want to serve people in this area. The bigger picture is that we want to provide this kind of service to these people. At this point in time, this is the person who is leading us. This is the person with the, man with the mandate to manage. What is my role there? Mm. If my role is to serve, is, if, if my role is to provide this kind of support, you give it 100%. 100% is the number on which we will take this brief break. This is springboard 
you're virtually embracing. I call it a relaxed conversation about finding yourself. It will seem relaxed, but it is, it is literally packed with very heavy concepts that have been simplified for our benefits. My guest, Pastor Maoli Chikata, um, which of the legs should I mention first? He's a pastor, he's a broadcaster, he's also an IT guru. Mm -hmm. And Pastor Maoli is helping us to look, to look at his life and also distill lessons about how to find yourself. And when I come back from this break, I'm going to ask him about, hopefully, the seasons, also about service, and about how that thing that we are saying you should look up to is such a small seed in your hands that you are, you are saying, can something good come out of this thing? We'll explore all those themes, hopefully, in the second part of this conversation. Springboard is brought to you by the Springboard Roche Foundation and proudly sponsored by MTN Pulse and the Enterprise Group with media support from the Multimedia Group and the Graphic Communications Group. Talking about enterprise, let me remind you of why you must bundle insurance policies and save yourself money. The issue is very simple. If you combine your home, your auto, and other policies with the same insurer, you enjoy discounts and, and ensure that you maximize your coverage while enjoying savings on your overall insurance costs. If you want more about this, call Enterprise on 030-263-4777. 030-263-4777. Email info at myenterprisegroup.io. Enterprise your advantage. Let's go for a break. When we come back, let's get a bit more from Pastor Mauli Chikata. Please don't go away. Hello? Bye. 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 Well, everybody's heard about the bird of the lie. Bird, bird, bird is the word of the lie. Bird, bird, bird is the word of the lie. Don't you know about the bird? Well, everybody knows that the bird is the word of the lie. To consider the implications. <laughs> Whether it's 1924, 2024, or 2124, we've always known that you are driven by your sense of safety and well-being. It is what drives us to, to see you through from start to finish, from small to big. And in the last 100 years, as you have evolved, so have we also expanded to serve you in many ways. From cradle to grave. With expertise in insurance, life, pensions, properties, health and for those beautiful memorable goodbyes. It's 2024 and in all our markets, our pedigree is recognized, our strength respected, our expertise valued and our solutions sought by all who desire an advantage in life. Experience the time-tested and truly trusted 100 years legacy of Ghana's oldest insurer. Take charge of your future now. Insurance, life, pensions, property management, funeral services, health insurance, enterprise your advantage welcome back to springboard your virtual university brought to you by the springboard Russia foundation and proudly sponsored by mtn ghana the enterprise group with media support from the multimedia group and the graphic communications group my guest for today pastor mauli chikata helping us to unpack the story of his life and the learnings and before i go back to plant biotechnology let me remind you about why this conversation should also let you turn your attention to agriculture, agribusiness, and ATV, the, the technical and vocational sectors. As you explore your possible career options, don't ignore the fact that you could find a gold mine in those sectors. If you are young and you are aged between 15 and 35, looking for options for your career and you would like to find much more about 
Agribusiness and ATVET, call the Ghana Growth Call Center on the number 030-8255-775. Call or WhatsApp us on 030-8255-775 and you'll be helped to explore opportunities in those spaces. Pastor Mauli Chikata did his first degree in plant biotechnology. How powerful is the agri sector that could not keep you? <laughs> I think <laughs> uh, I think I I I found peace in in something else. Yes, but yes. it's a very powerful sector. It's a very powerful sector that needs a lot of support. What we eat, what, um, we, what wear, we eat, what we do, yes. everything is built on yes. these sectors. But the policy around it, I think that we we we, we need to as a nation, recognize the place of agriculture and give it the support, all the support that the sector needs. Will that be the one thing you think we should do differently? That's the one thing we need, policy. Let me give you an example. You travel across this country and you see arable land, land that can be used for all kinds of things. Let's take, for instance, rice. We spend a lot of dollars in importing rice into the country. But the data also shows that we have the potential in terms of land size to feed ourselves. Why aren't we driving a policy into local rice business for our country to help stabilize the, the currency? Because we take a lot of millions of billions of dollars in buying rice. And these people, their countries are, have, have policy to help them. And so our local rice farmers, for instance, are competing with people who go for loans and their interest, their is, interest zero. is zero point. It's insignificant. A rice farmer in, in this country is going for loan and he's paying interest rate of 20 to 30%. It's not sustainable. So if we really want to push agriculture, it first of all must begin with the policy. Policy to help people in that industry to, to make it Ghana so that we can feed ourselves. And that will save us a lot of foreign exchange. So for me, policy is key. Before I let you go, <laughs> when you start a conversation around agri, I can't let you go on one question. <laughs> Apart from the the policy being the yes. enabler. Yes. I hear that people relate better to an idea when they see the benefits. Yes. So apart from currency being stable, help us to appreciate some other benefits of having a thriving, let's say, rice, local cultivation of rice and the implications for the whole value chain or our lives as a whole. Well, you couldn't have watched it. <laughs> <laughs> So we need to get more people into that area, right? But to get more people in that, in, to get into that area, we need to get people to tell successful stories. Unfortunately for us, we don't have too many of successful stories in the agri sector. People who have done it and really, really made the, the, the margins that people are looking out for. If you take an industry like sports, there are a lot of young people seeing people every time on their television sets, people playing football, people doing athletics and things like that. We don't have it when it comes to that space. Is so, it possible that they are there, but we haven't made it attractive for people to even talk about ex success in agriculture? Exactly. So typically, you talk about agri and the typical Ghanaian is thinking about the old man using his cutlass and his hoe on the farm. So a young man growing up may not have that interest and see agri as the option or the key to transforming his life. He's looking for something that will bring him quick money. Let me borrow your tweeting mind. <laughs> <laughs> Let me borrow your, 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 your tweeting brain or something. So yes. how would your experience in, in broadcasting, in yes. tweeting, in digital space, how can we borrow the skills from that place to make 
the same thing that you say is a national game changer yeah. and life saver. Yeah. How do we represent this to make it funky, attractive, exciting for a generation that wants to see things packaged in a way that will connect with them? Let me also borrow from what you're doing. Ghana grows, yes. It's one of the ways. It's the way to go about it. Speaking to young people, encouraging them, letting them know what Agric holds for us. So the digital space is there. The, the traditional media is there. A lot of young people are now in the digital space. Tell the story. Find people who can tell great stories. Let's look for people who are making it in the agri sector. But you can make it attractive. And when the young people run there, they may have their hands bent because they, the, the experience there is not, it's not a great one because the policy to drive it is not the best for us. It's not the best for us. So, You're talking about so story, storytelling, talking the about space, policy, and policy and You're talking about making it exciting for the young. Exactly. People. You're talking about finding role models. Role models, models in the let space. Me, yes. Let me talk about an experience a couple of weeks ago in Incredible Girls, where instead of telling the story repeatedly, we just took people who had done it. Yeah. One of whom was doing beautiful lemongrass tea, yeah. among other teas, and seeing a young lady with a university degree who was not doing the usual big five, yeah. but was proudly showcasing her teas at the desk with yeah. her staff yeah. and seeing tea that is packaged as well as anything you find in Harrods or any big, exactly. big shop on the Wall Street. It told the story very easily. And she just says to them, be confident. Whatever you believe in, go for it. Yeah. And that resonated so much yeah. with the young people. Of course, mixed with entertainment and the language yeah. that they can understand. Yeah. So that is about finding yourself. So back yeah. to our story about finding yourself. So for the seasons of your life when you seem to have lost mm. yourself. That moment in the prison where Joseph says, did God really say I will be great? <laughs> How do you navigate the down moments when you're trying to find yourself, but the thing that they say you'll be great in, nothing is happening. How do you navigate it? You navigate through, first of all, by acknowledging that God is the source of all strength. Mm. God is the source of life. Um, he says, they that wait upon the Lord shall renew their strength. So the place of acknowledging the power of God and the influence of God and the grace of God at work in our lives is very important. So prayer comes in, the study of the word comes in, and the fellowship with the Holy Spirit comes in. Um, scripture tells us in Romans chapter 8 that he helps in our weakness. So the scripture itself acknowledges that there are times that we'll be weak, so we will need the Holy Spirit to help us. So that is there. You also need people around you, people who will bring that spark one more time in your life. So there's a rule of the, the kind of friends you have, the kind of role models you have, the kind of people you submit yourself to. I should, I should be able to go to somebody whom I am accountable to mm. and say that this is my challenge. What do you say? So some of us have people like that in our lives. How big is it? How big How is important? It's very important. For, for me, I can walk to somebody like Reverend Dr. Stephen Wengam and say, Papa, this is what I'm going through. What, what is the way out? What do you think? And he'll give you counsel that can help you navigate. I can go to someone like Bernard or Samens and in recent times, Dr. Otabo and say, this is it. Show me the way out. And these are by significant the, pillars these are that you mentioned. Major pillars. And you need it, whether in your life, in your marriage, in your business, people whose voices, excuse me to say, you can equate to the voice of God. Who, when they, they speak, bring you the mind of they God. bring you the mind of God. Let me stay there and ask you a question yes. which is very key. Because somebody says, hey, if I got the chance, mm. it will not be easy. But I will go to these same people. Mm. I have two questions straight away in my mind. Okay. How do you connect with people like that? And if you get a rare privilege to be connected to, how do you stay connected? There are people who, who, th who think that you, you, you need to connect to big people. 
they may not necessarily be big people. I'm mentioning names because by the grace of God, these are big people. These are big men. These are big women. But I, want to but I did not. I did not set up looking for looking for any connection. So I can't say that. Follow these steps to get connected to Pastor Albert, or follow these steps to to connect to Dr. Wenger. No, there are some people that you may not connect to, but they've written books. They have messages. They have inspirational words out there. Follow, listen, watch. But there are people around you. For all of us, for all these names I'm mentioning, there are people who are around me because I work in the broad, broadcasting space. So my boss is like, is, is a mentor to me. Dr. Wingham, I mean, when I joined the, the pastoral team at CTFM, he's our leader. So I'm connected to him. So because of the work I do, I'm connected with people like this. There are people around you. So Name the maintenance, the maintenance is the part I'm looking for. Yes, so we'll get to the maintenance. I just want to, you, you were asking of how to get yes, connected. Yes, yes, and I'm yes. trying to establish okay. that for all of us, we have people around us. Value it. Value it. Okay. Let me give you the example of Naaman. He was a, he was a mighty man of valor. The, the scripture describes him. But he had a problem. He was leprous. Who did Naaman connect to? First, the little girl, a slave girl that they had gone to war and brought home, was serving his wife. That little girl's voice was the turning point in the life of Naaman. So you don't need a big man or a big woman. What you need is people of value around you. She was a slave girl, but her counsel was such of great value to him that changed his life. How do you maintain relationship with people? You need to be humble. Humility. Humility is key. You need to respect. You have to be somebody who is willing to serve. You have to be somebody who is willing to listen. Jesus says to his disciples, why do you call me Lord, Lord, and do not do what I say? So you say somebody is your mentor. You say somebody is your leader. You say somebody, you respect somebody, yet when they give you counsel, you don't take it. If I came to you and I said, Pastor Albert, I have this challenge in my life. Show me the way out. And you, out of your heart, pour out your experiences to me. Some of which are very painful. Very painful. On the angle of pain. Exactly. And you say, Mauli, I think that what you're going through, if you do it this way, do it that way, it will help you. And then I leave and don't do anything and come back to you again with the same problem. At least you want to see that I have it's done, always. I've made some progress. Even if it is not working, at least I took your counsel and this, this is the result. That will encourage you the next time I come to you to still give me whatever counsel or, or advice. So humility is key. Service is important. Obedience is important. This is another chapter in the book by my <laughs> guest for today, Pastor Mauli Chikata, helping us to unpack the simple, the simple issue of finding yourself, and if I may add, living out your dream. And this chapter, he's given us four pillars, humility, respect, service, and listening. Humility, respect, service, and listening. Tough one. Which of these four is the most critical? The most critical for me is humility. Why? Proud people are resisted. Mm. Even the Lord said, I resist the proud. I give grace to the humble. Nobody wants somebody who is full of himself around them. So for me, hum- humility opens great doors for you. No matter who you are, you've got to walk in humility. You know that respect, service, and listening are themselves born out of humility. Exactly. <laughs> so what is that? I met the person, he, 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 I, won't, I won't give a clue, he said he or she was very, very, very nice. Yeah. Then after one, two times, when I reached out, the person was not available. I called their personal assistant and I found out the person wasn't available, wasn't available. Then I realized the door has been shut wow. in my face. And wow. you are seeing that it's possible that one of these four was breached. Yeah. 
And that is the key to maintaining, maintaining. the doors that God opens exactly. to you. Also, for, let's go to setbacks and failures. Yeah. The reality is that sometimes you start the journey and you acknowledge that you made progress, but yeah. you are falling down from yeah. the seventh floor to maybe... You know, one of our books is called Snakes and Ladders. <laughs> you know that snake, you know that snakes and ladders? You think I'm like biting you. Yeah. There's some snake bit that bites you around the 90s and brings you out to like seven. <laughs> Charlie, when you find out that you are falling down the ladder, either yeah. in terms of a career progression, somebody said to me, listen, I can trace back to exactly where it started. Yeah. I had made progress up to some point. Yeah. From then till now, I am clear that I have retrogressed. Yeah. What do you do when there are major setbacks in your life? First of all, you need to acknowledge that you got it wrong. And this is the state I am in. Um, you don't have to live a lie. Many people try to live a lie, but you need to admit that this is where I am. I need help. And in admitting to where you are and to the fact that you need help, Understand also that, so let me go as a preacher. Understand also that there is nothing impossible for God to do. Um, God acknowledges that there will be times and there will be seasons in our lives where things may not go well for us. And so he makes his spirit available to us. He makes his word available to us. And so we are able to pick ourselves up depending on the word of God to be able to to bounce back. Also acknowledge the place of counseling in your life. One of the things that we don't do in our part of the world is seeking counsel from professional people. There are things that draw us back. And when you speak to, I'm not talking about advice, I'm talking about proper professional counseling that can help you bring your, your energy back to the place where you're able to put put the pieces together and get yourself running. It is not the end of the road. No matter where you find yourself, scripture says, he picked me up out of the miry clay from the horrible pit, in the pit. It, the psalmist said the pit was so horrible and I was in a miry clay. In the miry clay, you're unable to make progress. You can't, if, the if more you, you, the more you, exactly. So we find ourselves in places like that where it's like we are down. But he's able to pick us up out of the night. Clearly. How do you find the balance between grace and hard work? Grace and hard work. So the Apostle Paul will say that I work harder than all of you, but it is not me, but the grace of God that is at work in me. So as a Christian, the grace of God is God's ability, is God's power at work in us to help us to work hard. Mm -hmm. And that grace has already been made available to us. So when we pray to God, he gives us that grace. And then we have to work hard. So grace should not lead you to the place where you are lazy. Because the apostle who preached grace says, I work hard. But I, but I acknowledge that my hard work is because there is a backing for me. And that backing is what I use to produce what I see. For those watching on television, you can see the level of animation <laughs> when the word grace was mentioned. Because my guest, Pastor Maori Chigata, is the pastor, the lead pastor at Grace Center. Yes. So when the word is mentioned, you will see the animation. Yes, and if you didn't see it, you can even hear it in the voice that grace is. Or, or is it, because people get it wrong. It's like, and, and we interpret grace just as unmerited favor. It's like God has favored me. No, but there are, there, are, there are depth into the grace of God. The grace of God is also the ability God gives us. The enablement, the, to, the enablement do to do the hard work. So the Apostle Paul will have a challenge and will go to God. And for most of us, we want the challenge taken away, just like the Apostle. He wanted um, that challenge taken away. But God said to him my that my grace is sufficient for you. My strength is made in weakness. In other words, I may not take it away. So it's not everything that God will take away. God gives us the strength to walk through and to work hard to overcome these things, these challenges that we face. So there has to be that balance between the grace and hard work. 
This is Springboard, your virtual university. And if you are listening to us and you are on that journey of trying to find yourself and live out your dream, this is the perfect program for you. My guest, Pastor Maoli Chiketa, he's a radio pastor at CTFM, hosts This Is Your Day from 4 a.m. to 6 a.m. He also is a, a, an IT consultant and lead pastor at Grace Center. Pastor Maoli is trying to use a story of his life to give us a certain understanding of the various high points, the pit stops, the learnings, the tears, and the joys. And for the benefit of anyone who may just have joined us um, close to the end of this conversation, so let's start from the beginnings and in, give us a couple of minutes summary of how to navigate yourself from what you called the what is in your hand. Yeah. So you said Moses started with a rod. God used the familiar, the yeah. rod in his hands, yeah. and spoke about some greatness. Yeah. You said Jesus used the the five loaves and two fishes. And in everything that God does, it starts from something small in your hands that may look even insignificant. insignificant. Yeah. Give us a, 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 a minute summary of how to navigate yourself from that place where you have something in your hands that doesn't look even too big to the place where God makes something great. So we began by establishing the fact that to find yourself, you need to find God. Mm -hmm. Because as Christians, um, Jesus tells us that without me, you can do nothing. So for us as believers, um, we find ourselves in God. Um, in him we live, in him we move, in him we have our being. So we know who we are when we know Christ, when we know who he is. And in finding ourselves in terms of our talents and our gifts, Everyone is given a gift by God. Everyone has a talent that God has given to them. And it may look insignificant in your eyes because you are looking at what somebody is holding and you are thinking that is better. So let, let me go back to church. I tell church workers, for instance, the, the people we project are the people who stand behind the pulpit. So the pastor then the prayer guys, and then you come to those who sing. Those are the people we consider. And, and, and the announcer. announcer. The announcer, yeah. Hey, you are talented. You are. But an usher who tells you, welcome to church. Have a great time in the presence of the Lord. Not everybody can look at somebody's face with their problems at home and come and stand in the morning and welcome. It may look insignificant, but someone's blessing for the whole one hour, 30 minutes or two hour service is your handshake or you saying, have a blessed service in the presence of the Lord. So everyone is important. It all helps the guys who are behind the, the everybody sees you. It's Pasalbert's show, Springboard Road show. But as insignificant as the person changing the battery in your microphone is, if he doesn't do it, this show it's will dead. not happen. So no matter what you do, look at the bigger picture. The bigger picture for many of us is to transform lives and to make wherever we are better. So don't look down on what you have. Whatever you have before the presence of the Lord and by the grace of God, he's able to transform it and make it impact the lives of people. We should not compare our lives. When he was given the talents, scripture says he gave some five, he gave one two, and he gave one one. Everyone according to their abilities. And that's why earlier on I said that God is the one who knows what is best for you. I may look at you and you are all over the place. But if I'm put in a place, I may not be able to do it. God has placed me in a space and where he- cannot do what you do. Exactly. And God has put every one of us in that space. And that's why we need to respect each other, not compare ourselves with one another. Just find where God has placed you, work it out, trust in the Lord, build capacity to hold wherever you are. You, you have built so much capacity in holding this program for many years. If you give it to somebody with that capacity, I don't think it will work. So training is important. Building that capacity is important to be able 
to move to the next level. The so interrelatedness of the teams that you share is been there from the first minute <laughs> till now. Let's sign off by, by speaking to the issue of when you get to the top, what next? When you get to the top, what next? <laughs> The seed was am, a seed. I, am I at the top? Well, at least I'm, still, seen, you, I'm, you, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still, I'm still. We are all students <laughs> of life, but at least you've seen people at the top from your study. Yeah. It's not everything we see that we are fully yeah. expressed yeah. in our yeah. lives, but from your study yeah. as a pastor, as a yeah. leader, as, yeah. a, as an observer of life, yeah. what do you think is the biggest key to staying at the top? Keep great minds around you. Mm. On that very powerful note of maintenance of our success. Let me say a big thank you to, to you, Pastor Maoli Chikata, for, for spending this hour. It's thank you. a very, for, very rich moment. For having me. I hope I, you've enjoyed I, it as much as I have. I've enjoyed myself. Yes. And I, I didn't think this was going to come, but you, you, you pulled me out and I'm grateful I'm here. Thank you for the opportunity. I've enjoyed you. But in talking about pulling out, please look into this camera and speak to somebody who is in that place you call the horrible pit, the yeah. Mary Clay. Let's not always talk about, let's not always forget that even as we talk, somebody's in that pit saying, yeah. Lord, help me. Yeah. Speak to somebody for a minute in that horrible pit, in that clay that when you even try and move out, you are even sinking further. Yeah. And just bless them for a minute before we close. You may be watching us, you may be listening to us, and you find yourself in a place of despair. You may be in a place of disappointment. Um, I want you to know that it is not the end of the road for you. The, the, the God we serve is able to make all things work together for good. What was meant for evil is able to turn it around for good. And so I pray for you that the grace of God locate you and that the grace of God will bring you out of that horrible pit. I pray for you that God himself will stretch out his hand and deliver you and bring people around you that can support you to come out of that place. And I pray that you have that grace to know that it is not the end of the road for you. This is my prayer for you in Jesus' name. Amen. And on that note, I also said amen. So thank you. <laughs> Let's thank you again. so much. Right, this has been a very inspirational, a very sober, and a very deeply instructive edition of Springboard, your virtual university with Pastor Maoli Chikata joining us to talk about finding yourself and living your dream. He talked about his tweeting and talked about his actions in the digital space today on his page, on my page, on Springboard page. Let's keep this conversation going. What is the biggest lesson? What is the biggest point that you have gleaned from this conversation? Let's keep this conversation going and hope that somebody in a far remote part of the world can stumble upon one truth and that truth will lift them up and set them free. Springboard has been brought to you by the Springboard Russian Foundation and proudly sponsored by MTM Pulse and the Enterprise Group with media support from the Multimedia Group and the Graphic Communications Group. My name is Albert Okran, signing off and saying God bless you, God bless you, and God bless you.